Water's a little cold right now, so you can't expect these guys to do much for acrobatics, but we're trying some different things right now. We've got a wintering hole of smallmouth bass located, and we're trying to see what they want to eat. Ooh, that's a tubby one there. And this is simply just mimicking the forage out here. This is a smelt-based lake, so we've got a fluke-style bait and a jig head on here like that. So I'll dig out this bait for you so you can see she chewed it pretty good. And I ran a drop shot through here and a couple other baits and I thought let's do something you know let's mimic the forage a little bit better so threw that out there and what I like to do is hit bottom pop it off and then just let it kind of calm down and hit bottom again so that's a good sign first cast with that bait let's see if we can replicate. Awesome. So like I said, I'm throwing a fluke style bait or a minnow profile and I've located just a plume of bait fish. There's so many bait fish up right now and this happens to be adjacent to where these smallmouth like to winter. So basically what these smallmouth are doing is just waiting for a rogue minnow to fall out of the school that's a little disoriented or maybe is on its last leg. Makes for an easy meal so these fish can beef up and last the winter because they don't do a whole lot of feeding in the winter. In fact, fish, a lot of species almost go dormant. They don't need to feed. They're unlike a lot of different animals where they don't need to feed and they don't grow in the winter. So they gotta do it now while they can. They're hanging out in places they prefer to winter and places where there's lots of bait for them to eat. I mean, you can see that pin right there. As you can see, this is just robust build on all these smallmouth because that's what they're doing. They're here to chow. And then once the temperatures really dip down, like we're in the high 40s right now and it's crashing fast. It'll be in the 30s soon. And once that happens, it's really tough to get fish to bite. You can catch them through the ice, but you really got to you know dial down the finesse you got to use a lot smaller baits and you got to move a lot slower so now is a good time to catch these fish with reaction type baits oh it's a beauty so i came out here this morning with the idea that i was going to do some demiki rigging and that's essentially where i pull up on this wad of fish i mean i've already identified there's a wintering hole of fish here so i pull right up on top of them and I drop down right on top of their heads and I basically just let that plastic do its thing. I hardly move the rod. So I thought some kind of subtle finesse like that might get them going, but I realized after a lot of fish came up and looked at it that that's not what they wanted. So kind of in frustration, I cast it out, let it hit bottom, and now I'm essentially rip jigging. And that's gotten a couple fish to eat. But what I like about that, like I said, I'm fishing below all these wads of bait. So if you're that one bait fish, that's having a hard time, maybe dying. Those are the easiest for those bass to pick out. I mean, you'd think a Demiki rig is as easy as it gets, but it's just not triggering that instinct in them to feed. This looks exactly like a dying minnow down there. So think about fluke fishing in the spring, you know, how much water you can cover and that kind of erratic darting action. We're essentially doing the same thing, except we're delivering the presentation at a, at a greater depth. You know, related to that, Smallmouth are such heavy sight feeders. I mean, that's the nice thing about covering water. The fish typically are able to see your bait from a long ways off, but you also have to be persuasive in the realism of your bait. So I've chosen this Lunker Hunt Bento minnow because it's got a little holographic center to it. Lots of flash and clear water. Those smallmouth can see it from a long ways away. You know, something really important too is how straight you get these on there. Because if you have it a little bit weaved on that shank a little bit, the baits can be bent like that a little bit, and they have a tendency to swirl and twirl a lot of times. They really don't do what they're supposed to do. So be mindful of how straight you get that onto the shank of the jig head, because that's just gonna make your action a lot more realistic and ultimately with the fish have an easier time taking a bite at. You know, a universal combo for me is gonna be around that seven foot range and a medium action. 
I can do anything with that rod, literally. This happens to be a Tatula Elite. This is a, one of Brent Ayler's signature rods. And I've just found that this rod is pretty much universal for everything. Great feel, lots of power for fighting the fish, and you know, a little bit of a fast tip on there so I can snap that jig like that. I got 10 pound braid. What I like about braid is it's so snappy and responsive like that. So that just translates from the end of my rod right into the bait, you know. I do have about a 14 foot strand of fluorocarbon. And I usually just match it pound for pound. So 10 pound braid, 10 pound fluorocarbon. And I'm using a 3000 size reel right now. One great thing about that is um, smooth casting, your line capacity, but your line pickup. That's a huge thing, right? So when I'm jerking like this, I got a lot of slack in my line. When I do get a bite, I can gain on into that fish pretty quickly, you know? So a lot of guys kind of think that a 3000 size is a bulky reel, but the benefits are like so much greater than people actually realize as far as casting and picking up line and being able to fight fish. If you have a larger arbored spool, that disc is just that much bigger and that much smoother, so you do ultimately have a smoother drag. Like I said, this it looks like it's maybe a larger reel, but the components that it's made with, this is an LT series, so it's so light. So yeah, it's a larger spooled reel, but it doesn't feel like anything in my hand. The nice thing about that too, they're really not that expensive. Like the technology advancements in reels, you know, they're getting lighter, but they're also getting more affordable. They're just getting smarter with the materials that they use.